Hi everybody, my name is Gregory Scott and this is my game Armored Commander 2, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. This video is intended to be a kind of a new um, quick start for new players or maybe just picked up the, the game during the Steam Summer Sale. We're playing the most recent version that's on Steam, Early Access uh, 8.2.1. And today I'm just going to run through maybe about a day or so uh, of a campaign just to introduce the basic uh, game mechanics, how you get started in the game. And um, for this I'm joined by uh, Flory2412 from the Discord server, a longtime collaborator, contributor, and avid player of the game as well. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've made quite a few campaigns for this game, some new units, and I've also been playing it for way too long. <laughs> it's one of my favorite games, so oh, I kind of hope that I can give, especially the new players, some advice on how to survive in one of the I guess toughest campaigns in the game because we're going to do the Poland or the the Polish early war campaign. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, if you look, um, if you scroll through the various campaigns, which we might as well do now, um, this is the main menu of the game. It's the first uh, the first screen that you see when the game boots up. Um, one of the things you'll get used to very quickly is that virtually all of the key commands in the game are all highlighted in this kind of light blue color, and next to it, it shows you what it does. So anytime you're not sure what you can do, you just need to look for a little menu screen like this and it will show you what you can do. So from here, you can change your options. There's various different game options that you can change. Um, I've got the main music off right now, but if you like, you can turn it back on. Um, you can swap full screen, font size, all kinds of different things you can do. And you can do that from within the game as well. There's also a unit gallery. So you can go through and see the almost 600 different unit types that are in the game right now with all kinds of details and information about you know what they're like. You can also filter this list if you only want to look at you know certain um, types of units as well. So that's kind of handy. And then you can look at your campaign records. Although if you've just picked up the game, you haven't actually finished any campaigns yet, so this won't be accessible. But once you do, you can see all of your past victories and um, uh, you know sort of uh, all the records that you've done in different campaigns in the past. Um, so yeah, let's get started. And. I think uh, audio level should be good. My voice might be a little too high, but it seems, it seems to be okay. I'll keep think, an eye on it. I think Eric White is the commander from the last stream where you died on the first combat day of Desert Rats Victorious. It could, yeah. It could very well. You'll get zero victory points. It yes. Because I'm playing the Steam version right now. Normally I play like the, the source code Python version that I'm actually developing. Um, but because I'm working on the next major update, that's all kind of a work in progress. So I don't actually boot boot up my, my Steam version of the game that often. So that's why you only see these two. Oh yeah, and then at the top here, this was the most recent um, community challenge. On the Discord server, we often do challenges where we all vote on a particular campaign and then we play through it individually to see how well we can do. Um, but as you can see, I died on my second day after only 100 It didn't go very well for you, It didn't, no. I got, I got hit by a heat round at a very close range. There's not a lot I could have done looking back, but at the same time. Um, it doesn't feel great. So yeah, there's 47 different campaigns available at the moment. These are divided into different categories. So when you load up the campaign list, again, look for this um, little list of commands at the bottom here that will tell you everything you can do. One of the most important things is your Q and E keys. Um, this is based on the standard QRT keyboard. If you change your keyboard settings, it'll be a little different, but there's gonna be keys to cycle through the different time periods. So there's a whole bunch of campaigns in early, mid and late war. It's not just the ones that you see in the original, uh, sort of in the first menu where you get it. So sometimes on Steam, people have posted, are there only early war campaigns in this game? Are there no others? But yeah, you can just scroll through and you can see all the various different campaigns that are available. Um, but I think for this, just to get started, probably the Poland campaign, September 1st, 1939 is probably the best. It's a very low difficulty, so it's rated at a three. And um, you're kind of, you're very, you, you have a good selection of tanks and you have a good select, you have a good sort of level of support compared to what you're facing. So it's probably a good place to start. So you want to do the German campaign? Yeah, that's okay. what I was thinking. Yeah. So the Okay, that's not so that's not one of the toughest campaigns in the game. That's actually one of the easiest ones. Yeah, okay, so enough. if you wanted to play from the other side, if you wanted to play the Polish defenders, uh, it's rated an eight out of ten and it's much more challenging because you don't have as good tanks and normal um, you're on the defensive a lot, which tanks aren't good at. Uh, it's it's enjoyable, it's challenging, but maybe not the best one to pick if you're just getting started. So yeah, that's what I thought. We've got the the like um, the ones that you made um, where you were in sort of like the, the borderlands between Mongolia and the, and the Soviet Union, but that's probably, even though it's even earlier in, the, in time, it might not be a good place to start. 
Yes, this this, this, these are not no easy campaigns. So if you're just looking for something to learn the game gameplay mechanics, don't don't go with Kalkin Goal right away. That's that's a one of it's a bit of a tough one. Yeah, so, save yeah. it for when you when you're a little more experienced with the mechanics. Yeah. So we'll start with the Poland campaign. Um, I think I'll only play through a day or so. So I'll I'll leave the 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 campaign length at the full sixteen days. You can change this if you want to play it through a shorter campaign. It's totally up to you. So and you, you can also use the R key to select a random campaign from all of them if you don't know what to play and you just want to leave it up to chance. Uh, so the next uh, uh, screen you'll see is campaign options. These can really change your um, the sort of the style of play and the challenge level as well. Um, each of these options will apply a certain modifier to your final victory points. So if you enable something and it gives you bonus victory points, that makes means it's going to make the game more difficult. So to start, I would suggest leaving player commander on because it, it gives it more of that kind of like roguelike permadeath feel where you feel like you're really invested in in the survival of your own character. Um, I think even if you're starting out, it's probably best to leave that on. on. But if you're starting out, leave fate points on as well, because what this gives you a kind of a get out of death free card, actually three of them during the day. And even though when you get more advanced, it's probably better to turn it off because it gives it more of a challenge. When you get when you get first start out, I think it's probably best to leave it on. Do you agree? Yes. Well, as a beginner, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. if you're just getting started. Because it, it'll mean it'll mean you have if you really find yourself uh, in a fix, it'll give you sort of an escape or a way to survive. Whereas otherwise, you might just be destroyed, and then you lose that. You day. do have to uh, decide when to use them, though. So basically, the way they work is, if an enemy fires at you with an AP shell, for example, you can use a fate point to ensure that that projectile will miss your tank. So it's like the it hand may of fate your, coming down. It may miss your you. You know, it may miss your tank anyway. You might just be wasting a fate point, but um, these fate points allow you to survive tough situations like this. So maybe you only I have a limited number of them. So yeah, you only get three per day, yeah. and I might actually use one during the day. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm going to leave the rest of the campaign options off. There's a, there's a couple here that add some nice uh, levels of difficulty. But when you're just starting out, probably best to just leave it at the default, basically as it is. Um, you know, when you when you start the campaign. Okay, so we have our selection of uh, tanks. Flory, what do you think? I usually go with a thirty-eight T. That's kind of my favorite for this for this campaign. I mean, we don't have to choose the best tank, but I think the best tank is the Panzer three F. I this is actually the tank I currently have in my. So I'm doing a, a mega campaign. In this cam in this game, you can. Um, so we, this is the Poland campaign. If we survive the Poland campaign, we can move on to another German campaign later in the war. And what I'm trying to do at the moment is to complete the entire war as a German tank commander. I'm currently uh, commanding a Panzer VF in France in 1940. And that thing is so good because you can't see this now, but the Coax machine gun is one of the most powerful machine guns in the game. I think it was a twin MG. Yeah, pro that's war. probably why. It's probably two mounted next to each other, right? And um, especially in these early war campaigns, you will mostly be fighting infantry or armored vehicles with a little bit of them, but not too much. And a machine gun is really useful in these situations. Um, my favorite early war German tank, okay. to be fair. I'm convinced. Um, now, the dark gray color for the 37L. 37L is the main gun. It's a 37 millimeter long barreled, but um, the gray color means that it's unreliable, right? Yes, if I remember it'll correctly. break down yeah. more easily. Um, but still, I mean, 37L is, is, is quite a good gun for this period um, in the war anyway. Um, the, these little boxes here for the units give you a ton of information in a very small amount of space. It'll tell you what the main weapons are, whether it's armored or not. Um, the turret armor, and these are the ar armor levels for the front and the side. The hull armor and the FT means it's a fast traverse turret. It means it's, it's, you don't have to hand crank it. It actually has an electric motor to move it. So you have less of a penalty if you need to turn your turret and fire at somebody in the same turn, uh, for example. Um, the, there's, a, there's a section on the Steam Guide that details um, all of the various different types of information you can find here. So if you ever see something in a unit and you're not sure what it is, you can just pull up uh, the, 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 Steam, uh, the Steam Guide and check that. But yeah, let's go with the, with the 3F. Okay. So this is the first layer of the game. This is the, the, the calendar layer. 
Um, from here, there's various different menus that you can access um, down here through the number keys. So if you see these little numbers, oops, these little numbers, my mouse cursor isn't quite lining up properly, but yeah, okay, you can see uh, these little numbers right here open up uh, various different menus. Um, the first thing you should probably do is add skills to your crew. So from your crew, the crew and tank menu, you can see all of your various uh, crew. You can select one. Let's select the commander, press E, and it brings up the report with all of the, uh, all the different information um, for your crewman. Yeah. So you can see, um, you can give him a nickname if you want. You can change his first name or change his last name. You can also um, increase different stats, which have an effect on his effectiveness. And you can also add new skills as well. And increasing stats and adding new skills is done by spending advance points, which are at the bottom there. Every time you go up a level and then every time you're promoted to a higher um, officer rank, you're given advance points and you can use this to improve, improve your character. Um, so I think for Rainer here, um, he's already got, I would definitely want to spend a point on Grit because I would like him to survive. Uh, th yes. Three is good, um, but we could make it better. So what these stats do is perception makes it easier for that crewman to spot enemy units and identify them, which is important, but there are other things as well. Morale decreases fatigue or the, the accumulation of fatigue during the day. Fatigue is something that makes your crewman less effective over the course of the day. You can lower it by taking breaks of sorts, by um, waiting in a, in a position. Morale makes it easier to handle fatigue in the game. Grit is arguably the most important one for your commander because it makes him less likely to die of a wound. And in this game, if you play with player commander, which I recommend, which is basically the, the intended way to play it, you will lose as soon as your commander is killed. So give your commander skills and stats that make it easier for him to survive. Knowledge is a stat that um, increases experience gain. So basically, the more knowledge you have, the, more, the faster you level up. That's useful later on. Right now, it's not the most important thing to get. We should give him some, you know, putting him up, uh, putting up his, or increasing his grid is a good idea. We should also give him some skills to, in, to make him more likely to survive difficult situations. Absolutely. I recommend. I recommend um, quick reflexes if we're going to use them to spot. Yes. So we'll buy that skill. Um, improve, I personally really love improve recon. Yeah. So this this you'll see in a moment when we get on the actual the sort of the strategic battle map. I don't know the sort of the larger map. Um, it's very important to know what you're go what you're getting into before you get into a battle. So this skill will give you more accurate information about what you might face if you move into an area on the map. And then what do we have? One advance point left. Is this does this tank have a separate? So he's just uh, a commander, right? So we have a separate gunner. Okay, that's good. And you'll find that different tanks um, with different types of positions play very differently. Like if your commander is also the gunner you have to select a different set of skills for him as opposed to if you have a dedicated gunner like we do here. Um, so maybe... Enemy spotted is a good idea. Keen senses, because that makes it less likely to be engaged by infantry at close range. Yeah, I think that's good for... Um, this is a good one for yeah. survival as well. Yes, keen senses. The idea is that your commander is more like spot enemies before they are very close to yeah before attack. they pop up in that close range all right good so that's our commander this game in infantry is very dangerous at close range but not quite as dangerous when they're further away from your tank yeah medium range they might have a, a light machine gun or a medium machine gun but that's about that's about it it's only really when they get into close range and they do like um hand-to-hand -hand attacks that, that they're, they're really dangerous and deadly so for our gunner, what do you want to just a sort of a basic gun to hit improvement? Yes, I always improve his accuracy first. And then nose weak spots is probably not going to be all that useful yet. Yeah, the Polish tanks we'll be engaging with light, and we won't have much trouble knocking them out with the 37 millimeter gun. So maybe a rate of fire um, bonus? Yes, quick trigger is nice. Sounds good. And for a loader, it's really only... Um, actually, gun maintenance is handy because 
Um, it'll reduce the chance of uh, breakdown. But fast yes. hands will just give us a... I think probably gun maintenance is probably better for the long run. Yes, my what? first choice for no orders. Even though we're only playing a day, you have to think, well, if I were playing a full campaign, what are the sorts of things that would help me out um, and help us to work as a team? And then do you quick shifter for the driver? Yes, so we can drive away from infantry, especially if we have to do that in a hurry. And for the assistant driver, I think usually I either give him shell toss or a burst fire, because that's basically all yeah. he's going to do. Yeah, I don't use... Well, you will see that whole machine guns are only for limited use in this game, so I don't use them very often. Okay, so Shout I'll give him... on the other, it's just generally used for parade of fire. All right, good. So we've got all of our crew. We've uh, spent our advanced points. From this menu, we can also do things like swap their position and stuff, but we don't need to because they're all in the correct positions right now. Um, some of the other little menus are the journal. So as things happen during the day, they'll be added to a journal here. And you can actually go back and forth. Um, once you've played a few combat days, you can go back and look at your journals for previous days. Field hospital, which will matter if, if anybody gets seriously injured, there's a chance they may be sent to the field hospital and they'll have to spend a certain amount of time there before they come back and rejoin your tank. And then finally, this sort of um, proceed menu, which gives us information about the current week and today's mission. So today is a spearhead mission. It's all about driving forward and making as, as, as much progress into the map as we can. And uh, we've got pretty good levels of air and unit support. Not so great on artillery, um, but as long as it's not overcast or foggy, that air support can be very helpful. All right, so shall we get started? Yes. Let's go. All right, so the next screen you'll see is the ammo load. Um, this tank only has one gun, but if uh, a small handful of tanks have multiple guns, usually a hull gun and a turret gun. So here you would actually have to load both of them, but here we, um, we've only got one gun to worry about. Later on in the war, not this early, but later on, we'll get access to APCR ammo, which is much better for penetrating armor, although we don't really need it um, in this campaign. So that's why it tells you here, but it says not, not yet available. Um, so basically we load um, high explosive and armor piercing. High explosive is for soft targets, people and guns and uh, unarmored vehicles and things like that. And armor piercing, of course, is for armored targets. So if you don't know what to do, you can always hit, just hit X and that will give you a default load. And then you can fine tune this a little bit too. So once you have some some experience playing the campaigns in this game, you will have, um, you'll find it easier to estimate how many AP rounds you should load and how many HE rounds. For this particular tank, what we will soon see is that uh, we can take out most soft targets with a machine gun, especially a coax machine gun. Um, there will be, occasionally we'll run into Polish armored cars and maybe tanks. So I recommend bringing maybe 30 AP shells. Yeah, that sounds good. 25, maybe 30 in total. Um, not counting the ready, the ready rack and yeah, rest just HE shells. Extra ammo is not really necessary here. Um, so the, what, 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 what's the deal with extra ammo? Well, you can always load a few more shells than your limit, but then these shells will not be uh, stored in the place where they belong, if you will. They'll just they be will stacked just, kind of inside the crew. They'll be lying around somewhere else. And Which is dangerous. Find here is if or you know when an, uh, a shell penetrates your tank, it will wreak havoc inside it. So if that hits, um, some kind of high explosive shell lying around somewhere in your tank, there'll be an ammo rack explosion. Yeah. We've turned that option off actually, so there will still be ammo rack explosions, but they will be far less dangerous. But if you play this with the realistic um, difficulty options, an ammo rack explosion will kill your entire crew and destroy your tank. Yeah. So extra ammunition increases the risk of that happening immensely. So you want to be careful about that option. In, I'm not saying it's generally a bad thing. There are a few tanks in this game with which only carry a very limited number of shells, and for those, you might want to bring a few extra shells just so you can get something done. With this particular tank, it's not really a problem. We can rely on machine gun fire for the most part. We will occasionally have to fire a long-range HE shot at a gun, maybe, or an infantry squad. And we will have to use the cannon to knock out armor targets, but yeah. that's it. No sense taking the risk. 
All right, so this is sort of the second layer of the game. We've sort of set up our combat day in the calendar, and now we're on the, uh, the screen that we spend the combat day on. And as you can see on the left, we, um, you can see our tank. Uh, at the bottom left here, we have a series of menus with different tabs that we can open up. So that gives us all of our commands and information. On the upper right up here, you can see the weather. So it's heavy clouds. Uh, there's rain falling, the temperature is warm, there's a light fog on the ground, and the ground conditions themselves are muddy. And all of these will have certain types of effects on gameplay, which you'll see. Um, we get a reminder of what we're supposed to be doing today in the day mission, so spearhead. So this means that the further you go into the map, the more victory points you'll, you will get to capture them. So like, for example, in these rows, it's one, one, but then it goes up to two, two, three, three. And if we can move far enough so that we kind of scroll into a whole, totally new map area, the rewards for capturing zones will just go higher and higher and higher. So the further kind of upward you can go for this mission, um, the more victory points you gain. And that's, you know, basically the main metric for figuring out how successful you are um, in the campaign is, is capturing or making victory points, I suppose. Um, and then in the middle, you can see the map. So this is various different types of terrain, dirt roads, the little kind of gold colored um, uh, highlights are objectives. So here, if we capture this zone, we get a, a special reward. If we capture this zone, we get a special reward. If we just recon, if we just do reconnaissance in this zone, we get a victory point um, uh, reward as well. You can see there's a river running through the middle. Um, some of these rivers have bridges over them; others don't. There's a little. There's two fortresses actually here in the middle, and then various different types of terrain, right? Marsh, woods, um, fields, and all of these will have different sorts of uh, effects on whether, uh, if, if a battle is triggered, if you trigger a battle in one of these zones, it'll have different sorts of um, different sorts of effects. But for all of these, if you hover the mouse cursor over the zone, it will give you some information about it, at least. But yeah. if you want to move quickly, um, there are basically two things you should keep in mind. Avoid rough terrain. Hills, for example, will slow you down. Forests will slow you down. Um, marshes will slow you down, especially. Uh, and the second thing is, as you can see, there is a road. It's it's a nice road. It's even crossed. It even leads us to a bridge up there across the river. Now, the perfect way to do this would be to follow the road. Follow the road. Keep moving. But it gets more complicated as this. As you can see, there are three yellow dots on this map. These are objectives. If we can complete the objectives, we'll get bonus points. So you always want to balance it out. Do you want to move as far as you can, or do you want to may maybe take a detour and complete an objective? And of course, you also want to use recon to explore, to scout ahead and, and to figure out which, what kind of resistance you're expecting. Sometimes when there's a lot of resistance in front of you, it's a good idea to just avoid that and take a detour, even if it, you know, even if you waste some time. It's not it's worth it because if you die, you're, you can't earn any more victory points, right? Your campaign is over. So yeah, you're always trying to balance the potential reward from capturing objectives versus the threat or the danger that might be posed. Um, so the, the, main, the main tab or the main menu tab that you'll be using on the left here is travel. And travel opens up the kind of the main keys on the left part of the keyboard to highlight different zones that are adjacent to you. And uh, from these, you can either recon them, which takes 10 minutes, or you can travel into them. And as Flory said, the travel time depends on whether or not there's a road and the type of terrain. So if I were to just go cross country, this would take 40 minutes, but to go along the road, it only takes 25. And if you look at the top here, you'll see it's currently 546 in the morning. That is, um, and eventually the sun will set and that'll be the end of our combat day. Time is kind of our currency for this layer of the game. You want to be able to be as efficient as possible and not waste too much time you know, going into woods or taking long detours around the map, because then the day will be over and you'll have lost out on opportunities to make um, to make victory points. So what's that objective on the right? So it's a capture objective and it's along the road. So I think it probably makes most sense, unless there's a huge amount of resistance, just to kind of jump up here to the left. Um, I think my, my mouse cursor isn't quite synced, but you can see the ones that I'm kind of highlighting here. Um, yeah, just to go here, so I'll recon it. Yeah, it's yeah, not too bad. Um, just very quickly, I'll, I'll show off the other menus. So uh, first is the supply. You can see your, um, your, your different guns and the amount of ammo that you have. You can also play with the ready rack. 
Uh, the ready rack is kind of like a box of ammo that's very close to the gun, so it's easier for the loader to grab it and to reload. So what it does is that it increases your chance of getting multiple shots off in one turn. So it's helpful to keep that ready rack loaded with shells that you might need um, before you go into a battle. And um, from this menu as well, if you need to later on, you can re request a resupply truck, which will hopefully allow, uh, arrive and allow you to refill your ammo. Um, otherwise, you can see your crew. So, you know, just sort of, you know, basic, um, very similar to the, to the menu in the other layer of the game. You can highlight different crew members. You can open up the crew menu. If you wanted to buy skills from here, you could. Um, number three is the travel menu. And then number four is your squad. So you're not alone in the game unless you pick the, the, the campaign option, go it alone. Normally, you'll have other tanks. It's terrifying. Which yeah, is which is terrifying. really scary. It gives you a big victory point bonus. I'm a hot four armor command two player, and I do not play with that difficult option. Just to let you know, yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm not that foolish. Your squad mates aren't perfect, and the AI isn't perfect. But a lot of times, they'll at least take a bullet for you. They'll at least you know take an incoming attack that was meant for you, which is still very helpful. So in our squad, it's fairly small. There's only three tanks total. It's ourselves, another Panzer III F, and then a, a Panzer III D. And this will be slightly this will be slightly randomized at the beginning of every day. Um, within sort of, you know, historical boundaries. Uh, you can also set their default command at the start of a battle. Um, sometimes you might want them to concentrate on your target. Other times you want, might want them not to fire at all at the beginning until you tell them to do so. So you're going to attack that zone, aren't you? Yeah, I think so. So what's in okay. it again? Okay, so... so before we do this, let me just explain to, to our viewers what I do when I decide to attack a zone. So look at the recon report. It says infantry squad, truck, and armored car. One thing you can do is, before you go into that zone, check your ready rack. Right now we have three HE shells in our ready rack and three AP shells. And for this particular encounter, that's a good idea, because we may need an HE shell to take out that truck. We may need a few HE shells to fight that infantry squad, depending on the range. But we will also need a few AP shells to deal with the armored car. So... Like saying 50% HE, 50% AP here, that's fine. If we wanted to, we could change it. We could put more AP shells into the ready rack or more HE shells. Depending on what and the report was like of what, what we report. expect to find. The second thing you should think about before moving into a zone is do you want your crew to be buttoned up or exposed? That would be tab three, I think, or two. Yeah, um, so in tab two, you can view your crew, and you'll also note, um, I can't remember if this this was part of the, the previous view, probably not, but now if you're, if you're, the position that your crewman is in, if it has a hatch, you will see either BU or CE. So I can actually, um, where is it, H? You could open or close that this position's hatch here. So CE means crew exposed, it's open. BU means buttoned up, it's closed. And this is important because, of course, the whole point of being in a tank is having armor protection around you. If you open up your hatch and pop your head out, all of a sudden you lose a good part of that um, protection. But on the other end, you'll have more visibility. And yeah. um, going into a zone CE, or, you know, exposed, it gives you a better chance to avoid an ambush. So it depends on, again, this is something that depends on the enemies you're expecting. So we have an infantry squad here. They might fire at us with rifles or machine guns, maybe. So that would be a reason to be buttoned up, maybe. But on the other hand, that armored car might also have, a, I think, 37 millimeter gun, Polish ones. Possibly. So it would be a good idea to spot that thing as soon as we can, so we can, you know, assert the danger. Is well, it, it, well, could we uh, could we op open up their driver's hatch? Because their driver is not our commander, right? We can always replace the driver. Yeah, that's another brutal lesson we're, going, we're trying to teach you here. <laughs> Use your, your other crew. Survive, the other crew are expendable. You know, keep them alive if you can. It's yeah. always good to have an experienced crew with you. You're not trying to get them killed. We're not trying to get them killed, but if we have to get someone killed, we don't want it to be the commander. Yeah, do a, do a risk assessment, and um, when you calculate your risk assessment, other crewmen are, are always more ex ex uh, expendable than, than yourself. I always do it with the assistant driver. So the assistant driver is the the guy who does doesn't want to be under my command. He's even time. more expendable, right? It's like in Fury yes. when they get the replacement assistant driver and right. has no idea what he's doing. Yes, he was transferred from an like a, a desk position. Okay, so uh, and ready? the last thing, the last oh, thing support you want, or you uh, want to think about support? You need support for this. So um, in this particular campaign, most of the units will be facing 
won't be too much of a threat. What you can do is you can call in air support, which is currently not possible because of the fog. Uh, you can call in artillery support or unit support. Air support is useful against big targets, basically. Because they have, they have to spot them from the air before they can actually attack. Tanks. They can also destroy trucks fairly reliably. And they, may, they might also drop a bomb on an lucky. So right now, there's a truck and an armored car. I wouldn't say we need air support for this. Artillery support, then again, is useful against guns and infantry, most of all. There's just an infantry squad here. It's not too much of a problem. Unit support is useful against anything, depending on what kind of unit support you choose. I wouldn't do it here, but we will probably get a chance to show that off later yeah. when there's a more dangerous encounter. Yeah. So I'm and the last, thing, the last thing you want to think about is advancing fire. You can expend some HE shells firing at locations where enemies might be to suppress them, basically. This will make it harder for that Polish infantry squad to open fire on our tank straight away. That might be worth thinking about here. Yeah, basically the only effect that advancing fire will, ha will have will be to pin enemy units when you arrive, which means they, they're, if they do attack, and it's less likely that they will attack, and if they do, it'll be much less effective on you. And it's only soft targets that can be pinned. Armored uh, vehicles can't be uh, can't be pinned. So it's so, probably not all that useful here. It would only be useful for the infantry squad, right? And, yes. um, and like you say, artillery and unit support, we could bring them in now, but it's not really worth it because it's these aren't very difficult targets. Yeah, so basically for these, it's just a series of keys on the left there, and you either toggle, you toggle it on or off before you move, and then once you move, you've, you're you committed to it. Every time you successfully call in support, your support level will decrease, so it will be less likely to, be, to happen next time. So you don't want to call in support every single time. Yep. But you also want to make sure that you do call in the support when you need it. That's really it's, important. It can make a big difference yeah, yes. when it comes down to it. Um, and the last thing about support is that it does require a little bit extra time. So if you see, if I to toggle artillery support on, the travel time's gone up to 55 minutes because you have to radio in, wait until they're ready, and time it correctly. And then once they're ready, then you can move into the zone. So keep that in mind as well when you do, re um, when you're thinking about requesting support or not, that it's, it's eating into your time budget for the day as well. All right, so are we ready to move? That's all the things we need to consider, right? Right. Okay, so to um, proceed is just uh, the tab key. So the fog is cleared, we enter the zone, and there's resistance, so we are gonna have a fight. All right, so this is the lowest, this is this kind of the lowest, we're, we're deepest into the game now. This is the lowest level of the game. This is where most of the action takes place. Um, this is the sort of the battle map or the scenario map. As you can see, uh, we see our tank on the left here. We see our crew. We have the familiar kind of like little menu box down there that will change depending on the current phase. We've got a lot of information around the outside here. On the upper left, uh, on the upper left here is just kind of um, a console that will give you different types of information depending on what's going on at the moment. So uh, right now, this is telling us what the various commands for our crew will do. Um, on the upper right, we can see the current weather information. And on the left, we get a reminder of kind of what the terrain around us is like, it's villages. Um, now the map itself, this in the middle is ourselves, right? It's a little, it's the at sign, which is traditional for roguelike games. You can see our kind of um, the barrel of the gun kind of pointing upward. If you imagine that the tank is in the middle of the map where you, the hull of the tank is facing upward and then everything else is kind of radiating out from around us. So this is, and again, the mouse cursor, cursor isn't quite matching up, but you can imagine that's what's in front of us, that's what's behind us to our left and to our right. And it's all very abstract. So you, we can imagine there's all kinds of different sorts of terrain, fields and woods and whatever around here, but this is what's important. What's important is that there's some kind of an enemy unit. So we're forward and a little bit to the left at about 11 o'clock. There's some kind of unknown enemy unit at about 10 o'clock. And at the moment, there's something blocking our line of sight. We can't directly see them, but we know from recon and we know from radio reports and other sources of information, there's something out there, but we don't quite know what it is yet. And then there's one more enemy unit down here at about four o'clock as well. So the report was what? Inf uh, infantry, armored yes. car, and a truck. So we'll see so how what? accurate that was. It's not always 100% accurate. 
So what do I do in situations like this? Um, I assume the worst. So the recon report said truck, infantry, squad, armored car. It's important to keep that in mind. However, the recon report may be wrong. It will be correct in most cases, especially with the, re the improved recon skill. But because it might be wrong, always assume that there's something dangerous. Here. So maybe that's just an armored car with a machine gun, a couple of soldiers with rifles and a truck. Not a problem. However, that armored car might turn out to be a light tank. Could be a Polish tank with a 37 millimeter gun aiming at us right now. So what we want to do is we want to try and go full down here. That's what I usually do. As you can see, we are surrounded by buildings. Right? That's very good. That mm -hmm. gives us a lot of, of cover. It also gives us a pretty good chance to go hold down. What I would do here is I would advise, I would order my commander to direct movement. The driver to drive or drive into terrain, doesn't matter. Um, now it's up to you, Zuda, I'd say, whether you want to open the hatches or keep them closed. We might be able to spot them, but we may also want to have some protection from them. I might leave the, I, leave my um, assistant driver open for now. And have everybody the way else. I do it is, this is debatable, but the way I do it is I open the hatches if I if the recon report said there was maybe, maybe just a, enemy vehicles or um, infantry, but the infantry is not at close range. If there it has been a report of a weapon support team, I keep my hatches closed because have weapon support teams in this game are often mortar teams or heavy machine gun teams. And these guys are pretty good at taking out your crew as long as you have your hatches open. Yeah. I mean, a mortar is probably not going to get a direct hit on you, but even if it explodes, you know, 10 meters away, there's going to be shrapnel flying everywhere. Some of it could hit your, your crewman if he's popped out of his hatch and that's not going to be a good day for him. Same with the machine gun burst. Yeah. So, but at the moment, it's probably safe to um, to uh, open probably. up. Probably. Right? Well, we'll see. We get really unlucky. <laughs> yeah, well, that infantry well, well, turns out to be a heavy well, mortar team that one shots our commander, and that's the end. Of this video. Yeah, it could be. It could be a very short, quick start. A really quick, quick start video. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, but we'll see. Quick start and quick end. Yeah. Um, so uh, what we've been doing here is um, the turns at this at this level are divided into phases, and this will be familiar to anybody who's done like tabletop wargaming or anything like that. It's divided. You do certain things in certain parts of the turn. So the first thing you do is you assign the commands to all of your crew. Um, you go through, and there's a selection of things you can tell them to do, and they'll be stuck with that command for the rest of the turn. It determines what they can and what they can't do during this turn. So what we basically said is that our commander is going to be directing the driver helping him find out where to go and where to drive. The gunner is going to be operating the gun, although it's, it's pretty unlikely we'll be using it, but you never know. He's ready to use it if needed. The reloader is going to be reloading the gun, so that will increase the chances that we can get off multiple shots in the same turn. Um, the driver is going to be driving. That's mostly what he does. And uh, the assistant driver is going to be spotting from his, from his hatch in the front part of the hull. Um, the other option that Flory mentioned was drive into terrain, which gives you kind of a... It lets you pick a, a target terrain that you want to move into, but I think we're in stone buildings already. I think that's probably yes. And when trying ideal. to go hold down, it doesn't matter both, both yeah, orders. Yeah, because you're not going to be same. moving that far around, right? You're going to be staying within this kind of 120 meter wide area. You're not going to be like you know moving cross country and moving into a different part of the map. Yeah, so I think that's good for the first turn. Okay, so we didn't spot anything, but we could go hold down now. We don't know which of these enemy units is the, the armored car, possibly. Could be any. I would just try to go hold down here, or maybe pivot a little to the left, and then try to go hold down, but it's up to you. Yeah, so uh, if you remember, the, the, the map is centered on you. So at this point in the movement phase, if I pivot left to right, everything else around us will kind of rotate around. We stay pointing straight up, but relatively everything kind of rotates around. So if I pivot to, to the left, you'll see everything's kind of moved around this way. The entire map is always centered on us and from our point of view. Um, so is that what you mean? Like do one hexagon to the left? Maybe I wouldn't even do it here because the, the target on the left is not visible. So it won't have a shot, shot on us, but that that might be the, the dangerous target in front of us there. Yeah. So hold down cover is always directional in this game. It always protects the front of your tower. Yeah. If we go hold down here, we will have protection from anything that could hit us 
from 12 o'clock, maybe even 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you know, slightly to the left or right. But if that enemy on, in the uh, bottom right cor corner turns out to be something dangerous, they will have a shot at us. There's mm -hmm. nothing we can do about it. We can only take cover from one direction. At least we are in stone buildings, so that does give us some cover all around. And but it doesn't give us the same kind of protect protection as a There's another there. advantage when you try to go hold down, your tank is moving. So a moving target is much harder to hit in this game. Even if, you know, the, the, the guy on the bottom right takes a shot at us, as long as we're moving in stone buildings, especially, That'll be tough. the chance to hit will be very, very low, especially considering that it's raining. So and low range, yeah. Not very good here. Yeah, I forgot about the range. It's going to be hard to hit anything at long range, actually. But we'll see. Yeah, but they let them come to us. Yeah. They will come closer. We can use the machine gun. Let, and it'll fly. let them do the work. We, so we save petrol as well. We don't we don't use up too much gasoline. Right. Yeah, actually, I don't it's, know if the Panzer three was German. was it diesel? Were most of the tanks diesel? I think so. Yeah. Okay. We won't use it up too much diesel. Fuel. We won't use up too much fuel. Okay. So let's try to go hell down. So I'll hit H. <laughs> Didn't work. We had a 46% chance and it failed. Um, so we could fire off a shot, but I don't think it's really worthwhile. Uh, the nope. one, the one bonus is that if you um, if you try to hit something, there's a small chance, there's a small chance that you'll have increased chance to spot it next turn. But that's the only. Otherwise, it's it's going to be almost impossible to hit it. Um, so yeah, in, okay. in the shooting phase, you can select targets. You can select which weapon or ammo you're using. So if you look on the upper left there, I can cycle between the different types of ammo. Don't have any uh, APCR at the moment. Uh, we have the coax MG. Yeah, eight firepower. That's really good. That so, is ridiculous. I love this. Thing. So it's I yeah double, thing. double MG. Same. The hull MG. Um, for these, of course, nobody is operating them at the moment. So even if we had a valid target, we can't use it because we have to have a crewman assigned this turn to actually operate it. Um, but for the main gun, if you hit F. Um, it's the first step in firing, and what it will do, it will show you what your chance is, and then from there you can decide whether you want to go on with the attack or not. And here you can see there's so many negative modifiers to this attack, right? Uh, we just moved because we were trying to get hull down, so that's a huge penalty. It's raining, so that's a small penalty. We don't exactly know where the target is, so we're just kind of firing a shell in its general direction. And uh, it's, a small, it's a relatively small caliber gun as well, so I think that is scaled by the range, right? It's a small caliber gun. Does it, um, it's yes. harder to hit targets um, at farther range. Smaller projectiles like the 37 millimeter shell lose accuracy at long range yeah. because of, it has something to do with the velocity and the weight, I think. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's going to start to arc down, right? Because it doesn't have that much. They're more likely to sort of deviate to the left or right or something because I'm not an expert on that, actually, but it's just the bigger shells are more reliable at long range. 37 millimeter shells, not so much. Yeah. Uh, we do have a long barreled gun though, so you can see we get a small plus 12% bonus from that. And because, um, and our gunner has the crack shot skill as well. So that's giving us a plus three, but it ends up being practically impossible. So there's no real point this turn to make this shot. So I think I'll just skip past the shooting phase um, right. and we'll see what happens. So in the next phases, a lot of stuff might happen very quickly, um, but we'll see, we'll, we'll sort of explain what happens after it's finished. Okay, one thing happened, and it, and it was really quick. This unknown enemy unit at 4 o'clock moved, but it moved in such a way that we don't have line of sight on it anymore. And it doesn't tell us anything. That could have been the infantry, the truck, or the armored car. Yeah, because we haven't spotted it yet, we get no information about what it is. There wasn't even a sound when it moved, and that's by design, because you're, you, you haven't spotted it. You know it's out there, but you don't know exactly where it is. The only thing we know is that it's not a gun. It's not an anti-tank gun or an artillery gun because the guns can't move on the. Um... Oh, it could reposition itself though, and that might change. Oh. That might change its line of sight. I oh, think. I wasn't aware of that actually. Okay. I'll have to look into so, that. It's one of those. It's one of those fine rules where I'm sure I designed it at some point, but it was so long so we ago. we know. We know nothing. Okay. We know nothing. Perfect. Yeah, maybe it might be that guns can't can't alter their line of sight. I'm not sure because I think it's a it's a valid uh, it's a valid strategy to get out of the line of sight of a gun. Deal with other things first, and then move back in. Because if you're if you're there, I don't think they can get a shot off at you. So yeah, it's probably not a gun. It's something mobile. Um, but I'm thinking we should try to set up for a shot for the one that we can see. Um, and maybe yeah, maybe keep people spotting. Yeah, we need to spot the 
Chagas. Yeah. Otherwise, you won't have much of a chance. Okay, and so it's a rifle, man. So it was our driver who spotted it. So now that you would see. That would be an HE shot. Yeah. Use HE shells to engage infantry, guns, and unarmored vehicles. Use AP shells, as you may, you know, may have guessed, to engage armored targets in this game. You can fire AP at infantry, but if you do hit, it's not going to have much of an effect. You might knock one guy out or something, but not nearly the effect of an explosive round. So now you see when I put, um, you just have to trust me, my, my, my mouse cursor is over the infantry. You see a lot more information at the bottom there. And if you right click on them, it'll pull up the standard kind of um, information box for this unit to type. Um, they're just riflemen, they're not, not that complicated, but still for other things, it might be helpful to pull up their info so you can see what their main gun is, what their armor is, etc. So HE, should, um, should I use rate of fire? Should I, should I use the ready rack? Yeah. Oh, that makes a huge difference, or doesn't it? Press R before you start firing so you use the ready actually use the ready right it's yeah. very easy to forget about you and might you have it loaded the, yeah you the might change in rate of fire is very significant it makes a big difference and it makes sense right because if you if you go to the, all that trouble to uh to start to stock the ready rack and if it's right next to the gun i think it should have a big difference so let's fire so our chances are still not good because it's in some good cover the rain is having an effect and it's a long range shot but um, as you'll see, as we get more shots, even if we miss, we'll have a better chance of hitting it in subsequent shots. Get used to the fact that your first shots will almost always miss the target, but that's okay. Because as you can see, we have got rate of fire, and as soon as, uh, as, soon as Sudesanis fires again, there will be a much better chance to hit the target, because we are acquiring the target. So that what it means is the first shot misses, the commander realizes that the shot was too far or too short and he gives he basically makes corrections he tells the gunner to adjust the aim and that's what gives you a better chance to hit on the second and especially third shot so i'll do that now so you can see that. there you go 27 percent is not too bad actually at this range still missed so you can but see getting... yeah so the the second modifier in the list there acquired target we get a 20 percent bonus uh, just for having fired once, seen where it got, where it where it went, adjust the gun, and we get another shot. And you'll see there's a there's a second level of this as well called dialed in, where we get an even bigger bonus. And because I maintain rate of fire, so the loader and the gunner worked well enough where they can get a shot off quickly, reload the gun, they're ready to go within a short amount of time. I can actually fire again in this turn at the same target. Um, I can't pick a different target; it has to be the same one. But this really helps when you're trying to you know home, home in on a, on a target target in on a target i don't know what the right phrase is get get a target in your sights and actually hit it so let's see still only 42 percent oh i missed another rate of fire okay let's keep going yeah um i've hit the i've hit the maximum though now it's not going to go any higher than plus uh, than a 35 percent bonus but at least i get another chance but at, at long range in rain 42 percent is pretty good okay so i missed yeah. with all of those right. with all four shots well, at least you destroyed a couple of buildings. Yeah, yeah. Possibly injured some civilians, so there we go. There's that. Perfect. Now, in the, next, in the next turn, if I don't move and the target doesn't move, I maintain this dialed-in bonus or, or acquired target. Whatever the bonus was, I'll still have it. Um, there's a couple of situations where you might lose it, but for the most part, unless one of the two of you moves, you will st still have it in the next, next turn. All right, so one of my squad mates is doing a check now. Come on, squad mate. Okay, yeah, so they moved. it moved and went out of line of sight, so I lost all those bonuses. Okay, whenever you are not, whenever you you don't intend to fire the gun, restock the ready rack. That's what we should do right now. Yeah. We don't, have, as you can see, we are out of line of sight of all or with all of these targets, so we won't have a chat a shot at any of them. Let's manage the ready rack, and we can try to go hold down again. Yep, That's good idea. Do. I suspect the the remaining unspotted unit to be the armored car. That thing might have a gun, an actual cannon, and it could be at least moderately dangerous to our tank. Yeah. So, so I would pivot. Pivot, yeah. once, pivot to the left once, and then try to go hold down. And uh, I'll reload, reload the ready rack as I go. Um, so this is the crew action phase. It's only going to pop up 
if one of your crew is doing something that needs your input. Otherwise, it'll just automatically go past it. But manage ready rack is one of those actions where you actually need to tell it, you know, and you can see the shells in the upper left. I can move them in and out of the ready rack. Um, I think that's all I want to do in this phase. Okay, movement phase, pivot, and then try again, all down. I think really bad luck today. Just, um, so I don't need to do that anymore. Nope. There we go. Perfect. So now you can see it has it has HD um, on our little unit portrait up there. And if we put the mouse cursor over ourselves, we can see HD and the arrow points to the direction from which you have protection. So any attacks that come in from our front will have some protection. Basically what we've done, we've stuck, we've stuck our hull behind something solid, um, a hill or a stone building or something, so that if there's an incoming attack, instead of hitting our hull, it'll hit that big solid thing and we'll be okay. So it's not 100% protection, but it's a lot better than just being out in the open. Um, so, but what's next? I mean, if this, uh, if the infantry unit, I guess we're just waiting for them to move, right? Be patient. Let them come to us. Okay. One of, I, I mean, there are different players with different play styles, but I think it's a mistake to rush enemies in this game just because you're in a tank. You're not invincible. Of course, we could now start moving towards that unspotted unit, but maybe it's an anti tank gun. Yeah. We might expose possible. ourselves for no good reason. Or an and artillery it's... gun. Yeah. Which now we have a truck is coming in. We can turn the, the turret around and start firing at the truck. I would use the machine gun here. The machine gun is more likely to hit it um, because it's moving and because we have to pivot the turret first. Shall I leave the commander CE to get a little extra bonus for the direct fire? You Just can nothing. do that if you're not if you're not afraid of snipers. You can do it. <laughs> I'm always afraid of snipers. <laughs> That's a good point. I'm afraid of snipers too. <laughs> All right, so what I'm doing here, I'm using the um, Q and E keys to rotate the turret. And as you can see, the little depiction of our turret turns and the, the, the yellow highlights show where this weapon can hit. Um, but I'm not going to be using the main gun. I'm going to be using the coax MG. So you can see these, this is what we can hit based on our current turret uh, facing direction. And I can select the truck because now he's moved into medium range. Um, the coax MG can actually hit him. And let's give it a try. That's so, not too bad. Yeah, we do get a small penalty because we had we t had to take the time to rotate the turret, and the truck is moving between some wooden buildings, so he's a little harder hit, to hit. But we uh, get a very small um, bonus from the commander directing the fire. Let's see. So it's no effect. Uh, for us to get a partial effect, um, it, it would have had to be under 33%. That would have been four firepower. Full effect would have been the full eight, and then a critical would have been double. That would have been 16. So um, area fire weapons, like small arms, but for tanks, it's mostly machine guns. Um, there's different modifiers, and this is a slightly different firing procedure than th the guns, than what, what I would call like a point fire um, weapon. So here's our squad mates giving us good. That was a hit. Yeah. And as you can see, with this kind of machine gun, you have a pretty good chance to destroy oh. the target. Ah, got unlucky there. 0.2% off. It took some hits, but it's still going. It's still going. It's just got some holes in the, um, in, in the windshield. And there are enemy... Oh, okay, this is getting complicated. Enemy reinforcements. Yep. So now, as you can see, there is a new unit on the map. It, it, showed, at, it showed up at medium range in front of us. We have no idea what this is. This could be anything. Could be a tank, could be infantry, could be a truck. Could be even a gun. It's not likely to be a gun, but it yeah. might be. It's still um, possible. Um, do you think that's the priority, or should I? I would. I mean, this is a tough situation, but I would maybe open a few hatches, driver hatch maybe. To try to spot. Hatch. To try to spot. Yeah. Yeah. So the, we can turn. The, the whole reason around. we're worried about this truck is that it might be carrying some kind of like an infantry squad or a small team which it'll basically drop off at close range, and then all of a sudden we have to deal with that. But if we destroy the truck now, there's a good chance that we'll destroy its passengers. Um, otherwise, of course, it, it doesn't have any weapons. It's not going to fire at us. But that's the, the main reason why we're actually worried about this truck and not just ignoring it. Um, yep. So, so for the, but for the... Do you th I would say keep the gunner on Operate MG, because if we do spot this, we then have the option of rotating the turret around and maybe firing against it. 
depending yeah. on what it is. But yeah, I opened up the driver, the assistant driver hatch, so that hopefully you can spot one of these two. Just to avoid confusion here, the loader is still on reload. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You don't need to reload the machine gun with the reloader. It's not necessary. I don't think okay. there's any other command that would help though for the reloader, right? There's not much for him to no. do. This is, this is your call, pretty much. It's a rifleman squad. We could fire at the rifleman squad, or we could keep firing at the truck. Both of these options are viable here in this situation. I'm going to fire at the truck because um, I don't want to get the turret rotation uh, penalty. It's still at medium range, and it's in wooden buildings as well. So it's not kind of like an easy... If it were an easier target, I would definitely take it. But at the moment, I Fair think I'm, I'm going to keep firing at the truck. Finally, okay, I get a, a hit. Good hit. Good hit. So that's eight, and now my squad mates will act, and hopefully they'll lay down some firepower on it as well, or they might decide to, to attack the infantry squad. We'll see. One of them thought about it, but didn't didn't actually do anything. And okay. that's twelve firepower. Oh come on! Why am I oh, doing so badly at my own game? This is, oh no! It's not going well. No. This is our first battle too. It's only it's not even seven o'clock. First tough call. First tough call. Oh, yet okay. Stay in this position. You're on good cover here. Yes, we have or all down. Move out of cover, trying to drive away from this truck, which might be carrying infantry with demolition charges, Molotov cocktails, some stuff that is actually really dangerous to our tank. No, I'd say do another attack on the truck. Now it's a close range. Now it's still in cover, but um, yeah. I think we just have to take it out. Yeah. Basically. Otherwise, moving could get us into close range for, to this, right? Unless we go off in this direction. And mm -hmm. we, we lose our hull down and we lose stone building cover, which is actually really good. So I'm, I'm going to say just do the same attack again at close range now. Yeah. Um, but I'll button up my assistant driver. There's no reason for him to be out. I guess, yeah, the hull MG is only this, this hex, right? So... It would have to pivot for that. It's not worth it. Yeah. Yes. All right. That should do it. That that has to be enough. Come on. Well, I hope so. Okay. So squad mates are helping out. But we don't really need. We have enough firepower on the truck already. Hopefully. Yes. Okay, uh, that's the water team. So they bailed out of the destroyed truck. Yes. So the truck was carrying a uh, light, light mortar team. Yeah, so this is a two-man team. There was a chance that they would have been destroyed if the truck had been destroyed, but we, we weren't that lucky. Um, so now they've kind of, they've jumped out, out, out of the destroyed truck. They were pin they were automatically pinned for their first turn, so it's not like they could just jump out and fire at us. But we do have a mortar at close range. And, um... So this, this, is, this is good news and bad news at the same time. So the, the bad news is, as soon as there is a, as you know that there is a mortar team on the map, stay buttoned up. Yeah, we're if all buttoned up. These guys are firing at us. They have a pretty good chance of injuring or even killing some of our crew, even if it's just a light mortar team, um, unless we stay inside the tank now. The good news is mortar teams don't have any close range weapons. They don't have demolition charges or Molotov cocktails. We don't have to move away from them. We can take them out right here. Yeah, I would say we do an MG attack on them. We don't have to give up our cover. Yeah. So when in, when infantry or cavalry are, are moving, they're much more vulnerable to um, area fire attacks, like machine gun attacks, because they can't keep to cover. They have to move between cover, and that's when they can be hit. So even though they're in wooden buildings, they're kind of moving through them, and thus um, they're a lot more vulnerable to these kind of attacks. Um, so I think for for this turn, just another MG attack, right on now, on the light mortar team. Yeah, and they're, I think they're moving, so yeah. we will have a much yeah we'll have much easier time oh, beating yeah. them. This is yeah. So they're very vulnerable when they're moving. All right, I so we have full see. effect, and we got rate of fire with the machine gun. So let's do it again. So 16 yeah. firepower on them. There we go. Got him. Now I would do the same thing on the riflemen at medium range because they are moving as well. Yes. Um. 
I guess it doesn't really matter, but I'll put I'll put my turret in this direction just because. Where do you think keep it here? It doesn't matter well, all that much. The side armor of your turret is actually stronger than the front armor, which is unusual, by the way. Most tanks in the game have strong front armor or stronger front armor than side armor. Yeah, this is a bit of an oddity, isn't it? Yeah, so for some reason, there's some design reason probably why the, the turret on some of these early war German tanks is has more armor on the side than on the on the actual front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see we get a small penalty, well, a fairly substantial penalty for rotating our turret this turn, but the target is moving around, so they're much more vulnerable to, um, to machine gun fire. Um, but they're in stone buildings, so they're not completely in the open. Okay, yeah. Well, we tried. Same again. Well, they're not moving anymore, so do you think an HE shell instead? The 37 millimeter HE shells are a lot less effective than the machine guns. Uh, so still use the MG. Tank. Yeah. Usually I would say yes, but for this particular tank, I just love it. And we've got the acquired target, so eh, no effect. Hopefully my squad mates can do something. Uh-oh. Oh boy, okay. This is where I start moving. So I would drive away from these guys because now they're close range. Now they can use all these dangerous explosives or grenades and Molotov cocktails that could actually destroy our tank. Yeah, move us, move away from them, and you can still use the machine gun on them. As because they're moving as well, you'll have a pretty good chance to hit them anyway. We might be able to suppress them mm. at least. So I just want to machine gun. I just want to mention, because I think this is the first time we've actually tried to move into a new hex on the map before we were just rotating around and uh, and going hull down. Just like in rotation, you stay in the center and everything moves around you. When you move across the map, if you're successful, you stay in the middle and everything else is sort of slides either up or down, depending on the direction that you move. Now, everything in the map is is abstract. So it's not literal, you know, one to one representation of an actual piece of terrain. So the reason why in the last phase I moved, but we did move into a new part of the map, is that you have to imagine there's lots of terrain around, there's roads, there's obstacles. So in the time allotted, the driver was able to move a little distance, but not quite so far enough that we would actually be, you know, 120 meters away or whatever in a different hex. So we still count as moving, but we don't actually get the benefit of, of moving into a different map hex. So we're still at close range compared to this, um, this unit of, in, of infantry, unfortunately. Yeah, um, now we're in danger. Yeah, we're still really in danger. Do. But luckily, movement bonuses stack. So the next turn, if I continue to try to move in the same direction, it'll be more likely that I'll actually succeed. And it's like, oh, we've moved far, far enough. Now we're actually in a different hex on the map. Um, but like Flory said, yeah, I'm going to do a, a no-scope 180 turn and uh, fire fire my machine guns as we're driving away. Because why not? Right? Yes, excellent. Wow. Right? Yeah, that's Hopefully that should do it, All right? Things are looking up. And destroyed. Yep. So, uh, so depending on the roll and the random roll, they could have been destroyed or they might have been reduced, which means a few of them are, are incapacitated or taken out of action. Uh, it reduces their effectiveness, but they're still kind of an active fighting unit. But yeah, being destroyed is good. Okay, I think you know what to do now. Go hold down again. We have, we have to find cover again. Uh, and pivot too, right? Yes. And yeah, move your turrets towards that presumably armored car that we haven't spotted yet. Yeah. Because we'll have to take that thing out. And then rotate my turret. Uh... Yes. Okay, so we got hull down. Very good. Rotate the turret up here so it's ready to go. And again, just to show you, with something like this, you have so many negative um, modifiers, it's not really worth taking the shot. Because you're moving, there are only, you haven't spotted there are only it yet. A few, a few tanks in the game which can get a good chance to hit while moving. And these tanks are equipped with a gyroscope. And um, these are late war tanks, Sherman tanks, for example. With this particular tank, it doesn't make much sense to fire the main gun while moving. So either move or shoot the main gun. Don't try to do both things, both yeah. things at the same time. 
It's all there. Yeah, there's only a small. Sometimes if you move and then you have a target at close range, if there's no rain and there's no other negative modifiers, sometimes you can actually get a decent shot off. But for the most part, it's going to be either move or, or fire, um, in in the space of one turn. Um, yes, yeah, so I've set my driver and assistant driver exposed and trying to spot just so we can get a, actually spot that this target up here at twelve o'clock. No, nope. it might actually be a gun because guns are harder to it's spot. It's probably right? some kind of armored scout car. But yeah. it's just hard to spot at long range. So you think just just wait here until we actually spot something, or is, or they move? Yeah, I only do it for a few turns because of the snipers. So um, for those of you who have never had that pleasure yet in the game, there's always a chance of an invisible sniper somewhere, you know, it's aiming not, at yeah. the tank. It's a random event, actually. So you might they, a sniper might try to take out one of your crewmen if they're exposed. Because of this, if you have no reason to be exposed, button up. Even if there are no enemy machine guns around, it's still a good idea to be buttoned yeah, up. Better to be safe. There's also a chance of an enemy artillery strike, enemy airstrike. You know, uh, an enemy fighter might strafe your tank, and then it's your crew will have a much better chance of surviving that if they are inside the tank, buttoned up. Yeah, we haven't had any random events yet, but um, sometimes you know they're called that because they randomly trigger, and yeah, things. Uh, things like that could happen. It could be a, a random artillery attack against you, air attack, sniper attack. Um, so yeah. So we, we've spotted the armored car. It's a WZ-34. It does have a 37 millimeter gun, um, but it's mobilized. So at some point something and it, happened and... And it's hull down. Yeah, and it's hull down facing toward us. So it's have very fun. lightly armored. It's almost unarmed. Have fun expending most of your ammunition on a single target because this is going to take a while. <laughs> if you want to... But it's there's nothing you can do about it. You have to just have to keep firing until you hit either the turret. So pull down cover does not protect your turret logically. You can still hit the turret of that armored car. Most shots are more likely to hit a hole, the hole of a vehicle than the turret, though. So most of our shots will just hit the cover, and eventually, hopefully, one of our armor-piercing shells will hit either the turret or some unprotected spot at the hole. Just and sneak knock out in somewhere. But well, this will take a while. I expect this to take quite a few turns. So your su your suggestion would be to stay here and just keep firing until we take it out. Because there is another they can, option. You, we could and move can, and try to get around the hull down because it's immobilized. It's not going to move, right? They, yeah, they, they, they can shoot, shoot back. back. But that's, that's war, right? I mean, things shoot back. So that's, just the, that's just a gunfight. Both in cover, but it has a short, it has a short-barreled gun, and we're the one that we're moving, right? So we always get that moving target bonus. But you're right, yeah, it's 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 a lot more safe. Probably the wise choice is just to fire from here. Good luck. It's not, and it's only a four point five percent chance to hit. Oh well. Yes. And button up your crew yeah, because yeah. you don't want to be. Introduced to these Polish snipers. I'll set okay. I'll set the assistant driver to pass ammo now, so that when we run yes. out of ready rack, um, we'll at least get a, a, a smaller bonus to rate of fire, but not a great one. You can probably tell your driver to read the newspaper or something because this is going to take a while. Yeah, take a nap. Next for now. <laughs> I haven't even hit it. My my squad mates here aren't even trying. They know it's just about impossible. <laughs> So now our ready rack is empty, which means um, we don't get as good a rate of fire. But it's still pretty. It's still pretty good. It's a fairly quick gun. I haven't hit yet. What's that? Six shots now. Oh, and and now we get a good. And here we go. They're shooting back. Okay, so this until until he gets some acquired target on us. There's all there's virtually no um, chance to hit. Because it's a short gun, it's a small caliber gun. We're in good cover and the rain. Um, you'll see down here we have this option of hitting F for a fate point. So what this would do is spend one of our three fate points and automatically make the attack miss. But there's only a, a half a percent chance of it hitting, so it's not worth it. Yeah, even if that, and then a ninety-five percent chance of it of a save from the hull down. If it down. hits our hull, there's no chance of it if it hits our um, yeah. turn.
Okay, so we finally got a hit, but it hit the hull, and the hull's protected. So it's going to be the exciting. No effect. Of, uh, what did you What did you do in the war, Daddy? Well, I fired at a bullish armored car for an entire day. Yes. We're gonna need resupply. <laughs> okay, another another hull down. Fire it. There's nothing you can do. Keep firing. Oh. Unless you want to do something really risky, and I wouldn't do that. At least, at least our squad mates are getting in on the action now. So here's a random event. Okay, nothing happened, but it was a random friendly artillery attack. Um, if it had turned out differently, it might actually have been helpful, but in the event, it didn't have any effect. Eight percent chance, but we're, of course we're still protected by Paul down. I think one of the new players who watched me play the game a bit said, "I realize now that." A game of patience and and nerves of steel. Like this is what he what he's talking about, basically. There we go. Hit our cover. Yes. Fortunately, we're hold down, so no damage here. So, so one of the stone Bye. buildings in front of us got a little a little taken out, but we're okay. Yeah. So you can see our squad mates in the last turn did have line of sight to that um, infantry unit, even though that we didn't. So each pair of units on the map has its own kind of line of sight between the pair. And sometimes they may be able to see it, even if you can't see it. So that's why they did those attacks. Um, so at, at what point do we say we have to try something different? I've, I have 21 AP shells left. I guess I could use HE. I mean, it's very lightly armored. Oh. Even an HE shield might penetrate. Just hope it works. Okay. I've got to hit the turret oh, sooner or later, right? Hit, hit the turret. Ah, oh, come on. See, at least now our oh, squad mates are trying as well. Okay. Keep shooting. <laughs> I, I should have been keeping count. I think this is about five hull downs now. Yes. Yes. Should it, should should that be a new um should that be a new steam achievement? To to get a certain number of uh, misses from hull down in in a day. Maybe knock out an armored vehicle behind hull down cover. Oh, you hit the turret. Either the turret or the whole, probably the turret. Yes, so okay. something. We'll see. All right, so we got so a hit. Yeah. Now, let's hope it doesn't bounce off the armor, because that could also happen. I think this is a first as well, right? This is the first time today we've actually hit an armored target. So when yes. you hit an armored target, the first thing you know is that you hit. Next thing is that it actually it works out, did that hit destroy the target, or did it just bounce off the armor? Um, you won't know until, um, yeah, until, you've complete, until you've finished your attacks. The long barrel 37 millimeter guns of the early war are fairly good at knocking out lightly armored targets. Later on, they become, I don't want to say useless, but they become far less effective. Yeah, One, very The first vehicles, especially in the France campaign that I'm currently playing, some of these French tanks have up to eight points of armor. And with that kind of armor, a 37 millimeter gun isn't going to do anything at all. You need something bigger than that. You need um, either a 75 millimeter heat round, which is a certain explosive round good at penetrating armor, or you need support from German 88 millimeter anti-aircraft guns to knock out these heavy French and, to a certain extent, also British tanks. In France. Yeah, the heavy, the, like the Matildas and, and stuff. They've got pretty decent armor yes. too. Um, but for this campaign, the 37 millimeter gun is very, is very effective. effective. Yes. I mean, this target, I think it has zero points of armor, which means it's basically um, less than, what is it? it's like less than 10 millimeters of armor. So yes, it's technically armored. It's not just like just soft steel or whatever, but I'm, I'm pretty confident this will go through. We'll see. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention is that if we got rate of fire on this shot, you would have to decide whether or not to use it now. You don't get to see what the results were. Because when you're firing, not that I've done this myself, but I, I've, I've heard when you're firing a gun in a tank, you don't have time to sit around and wait and, and like and see what happened. If you're going to do another shot, you're going to do it right away. So you have to decide how many shots you're going to take if you have that option before you, you know what the result was. 
And this is more of a this is more of a factor later on in the war when you're you're really not sure if the hit is going to penetrate. But I think this one will. Too. And in fact, IL-2 tank room models that pretty realistically. Uh, when you watch gameplay uh, on YouTube of IL-2 tank room, mm -hmm. when, when an armor-piercing shell hits a target, you're never quite sure if it's enough. You know, it might just, you know... Just you know you've hit. hit yeah. impact, but, yeah. you know, that tank might still return fire, or maybe the crew is already baiting out. You don't know. Yeah. Uh, unless the tank is just exploding, then you can be sure. But it's always a tough decision to make so let's see what's happened with this one um so yeah we could even do attacks with other weapons or something it's still our shooting phase but it's not until the end of our shooting phase that that um that hit is going to be resolved so we'll see it's so yeah so we hit it in the front of the turret and basically the way that armor penetration works it's kind of modeled on two six-sided dice so the score required is a nine or less so that's an 83.3 percent chance so hopefully let's see there we go. Okay. I'm just, I was surprised it wasn't automatic. I guess because it's long range. Um, uh, no, because the, the base penetration score of the 37 millimeter gun is 9, so okay. it's never an automatic penetration. It's wow. just not that powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's still it's a relatively small gun, I guess. But we destroyed it, so that's good. Okay, so we've got one target left. We've got this uh, infantry squad up here that we can't see. Do you want to close the range a little bit, or just... Yes, and use the coax machine gun medium range basically just trying to mop up now and not trying but trying to stay at medium range so that they can't use any kind yes. of close close attacks and only because this tank has a much better OX machine gun than main gun if this was for example a sherman tank with a 75 millimeter gun i would stay in front of it and just use he shells here um, no, we have no line of sight. Yeah, but there you can see we were actually successful at moving, but we moved into some kind of place where the line of sight is blocked. So in our next movement phase, we'll have to just reposition ourselves a little bit so that we can get line of sight. But our, our um, squad mates might have line of sight, so they might do an attack. Yep. Okay, so they're reduced. They're not taken out yet, but they're much less effective. They're pinned down and weakened down. Pretty good. Um, so there's one command in the movement phase. You can see conceal, reveal self, and that is specifically to move yourself vis-a-vis -vis one of your targets so that you either conceal yourself, you put something in the middle so you don't have line of sight, or you move so that you can see them so you do have line of sight. So in this case, we have a 56.2% chance of moving into a position where we can actually see them. And we didn't. And they can't see us. So I guess the D probably only has a single MG, right, for the coax. Was it only the F that had the this kind of like superpowered double double coax? Not sure, but I think I know that the later Fancy three tanks only had a single machine gun, coax machine gun. The D might have a like a twin machine gun as well. Just less armor than the F variant. Okay, now we, we can take a shot. Excellent. Two full effect hits. So this should do it. It's going to be at least, at least 16. It's okay, 32. I, I feel bad. There's only half of them left. All right, so that's it. So that was the last, I think, of the unit. Nobody's left. That means we win the battle, and we have captured this zone for our This is how long an encounter can take if you think everything through and discuss it first. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're kind of... Play this game, just if there are some players right now watching this and thinking, oh my god, this is boring. The more you play this game, the faster you make these decisions. And at some point, it gets automatic of sorts. And then it's also, I guess, a lot more fun because you can just complete these days faster but yeah. also get in tough situations where you have to make you really have to consider your options very carefully yeah in this video we're explaining every step and we're kind of going through things where once you get more familiar with the game you know them already and thus you don't really have to think about it you just automatically um, 
but the, the, you just automatically kind of react. But the good thing about a turn-based game is you can play it as fast as you want, but then when you run into something that's really scary or challenging, you can stop and take your time and think about it and consider your options. Um, it's not the kind of thing where you need these kind of instant reflexes just to react to situations. You can sit there and look at the tiger that's facing you and just try to figure out exactly how to get out of the, the fix that you're in. Well, when I face a tiger in a Sherman tank, it's, it's usually a very easy decision making. Run process. away! No, it's no. <laughs> Run away as fast as possible. <laughs> Drive away. Okay. Okay, so now we can get that objective on the right. Let's recon that area. Let's also restock the ready rack in any case. Okay. Um, what oh. are we expecting there? So in this next, uh, only an infantry squad. And yeah, uh, I would just load nothing but HE shells for this. The number of, I wanted to mention as well, the number that you see in the hex is a, is a kind of a level between one and 10 of how strong the expected enemy presence is there. So two is very light. We might not, in the event, we might not actually encounter any resistance. We might move in there and discover, oh, nobody's actually here. They've withdrawn or they've you know redeployed somewhere else. Um, but the reason we want to go in here is because there's an objective that'll get us a nice eight victory point bonus um, if we capture it. So I've loaded up on HE. Um, should we just move in? Yes. I wouldn't do anything here. It's probably not even going to be an encounter. <laughs> you oh, say okay. that. It is. it is. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll we'll finish this. Um, it's already an hour and 20 minutes uh, just in this video. It was intended to be a kind of a quick start. But as you can see, there's a lot of detail in this game. We've, we've only really scratched the surface. Because once you oh, start to look at... Start to be a quick start yeah it's intended to be yeah, well, an introduction but this encounters and it took us a hundred minutes or so yeah <laughs> well there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to this game um so what we'll in do in fact if you look at the timer above <laughs> the in-game time didn't progress much further than the real time we spent discussing all of this yeah we're, pl we're playing <laughs> through the we're playing through the invasion of poland in real time so i guess completing my mega run as a German tank commander, might actually take me six years. Yeah, you six years. Yeah, it, it might. Um, but we'll, we'll finish. We'll finish this encounter one way or another, and then and then um, we'll in, end the video there. But at least we and have to, we have to grab yeah, this objective. If you, think, if you think this is boring, wait for your first tank loss in this game. Then you will no longer think this is a boring game. <laughs> yeah, luckily we haven't been in too much danger yet. I guess we could have gotten hit by that armored car. Um, but we, we played it smart, as you suggested, and stayed in cover. Okay. So, yeah, um, but even then, that Polish gun didn't have the same velocity as our long barrels, 37mm yeah. gun. We would have had a good chance of that shell bouncing off the, the armor, even if it hit us, even if it had hit us. Um, one thing I'll mention, this is kind of a more advanced thing that you can do. You don't have to do it. But one of the things you can do is set a default hatch status and command for your, um, for your crewman. So if you'll notice that at the start of the of the encounter, they were all in the kind of the default spot order, like just spotting for enemy units. But if you want, and if you know what they're going to be doing at the start of every battle, you can hit the X key, and it just saves that status. And so at the at the start of every um, battle, it'll automatically set it to that hatch status in that command. It's more of a shortcut than than anything else. It just saves you setting all of their orders at the beginning. So again, I would assume this is something dangerous pivot around you know turn around pivot try and, to go down yeah we're in wooden buildings now so that's that's still pretty good didn't work you can try again i could just keep doing this until we spot the target i think i'll try spotting with my assistant driver at least so you can do that sure yeah okay so it and is a rifleman squad so now you've got two choices here. You can take some long range HE shots or you can move in and use the BOAX here. Gonna move in. Yeah, and you'll see me anytime you move pretty much the, the gun is not gonna be very effective, especially at long range. But my squad mate wants to try it anyway. The AI is still a work in progress. Uh, I still need to make them work on them a little bit so they make more intelligent decisions. This might do it. Oh, just pin them down. 
So pinned, pinned means they can't move, and if they do attack, they, they do so. It's much less um, effective. Pinning a, a, a infantry squads is great because then they can't um, attack you in close combat. They can't assault you, even if they're at close range. Um, but of course, it doesn't last forever. Eventually, they'll unpin themselves, they'll rally themselves, and then they, begin to, they become dangerous again. Oh. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Not quite getting there. Let's try it again. That should do it. No, <laughs> not even. Oh, okay. So we brought them, we, we damaged them enough uh, that they actually surrendered to us, which is one of the options that enemy units have. If they're, um, if they're running low on ammo or if they're immobilized or something, or if they've already taken a lot of damage, there is, there is a chance that they'll just give themselves up. They won't fight until the bitter end. All right, so that, um, I think we'll end the video there. Um, I think Flory has stepped away for a moment, but I'm very grateful for his input. He's, he's you know, ab absolutely uh, one of the people who's the most familiar with the game other than me. He might be more familiar because he's probably played more hours, whereas I've just, you know, spent more time developing it. Um, but I hope you got a, a good introduction to the first phases of the game. Um, definitely consider joining us on the Discord server. You can find the link in the Steam discussion uh, forums. We, you know, every day there's discussion about the game. There's a lot of very knowledgeable players there who can answer your questions and give you suggestions. We have an entire channel for tips and suggestions on how to play. But otherwise, I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed the game. And now I'm back. Okay. So you're back yeah. just in time to, to say goodbye. Just to say goodbye. Okay. Okay. So I did I did say thank you, and it's very grateful for your input and your help and your advice today. Yeah, sure. You're welcome. Okay. And, uh, I also sometimes stream the game on Discord. I don't record any of this, but, um, you know, sometimes I do it, and then you can watch me play and ask questions and everything. So. Yeah, I mentioned the Discord server and where to find the invite link. Uh, it's an excellent place because there's so many people on it who have played a lot of the game and are knowledgeable, and it's a good place to ask questions, basically. But yeah, and, and your streams as well, which I think have helped more than a few new players kind of find their footing and figure out what's going on for sure. Yeah, the, maybe I can say this too. The, the most recent mod I've made for this game is an Armored Car Commander mod. So there You've already seen some armored cars, or at least one armored car in this in this short uh, video. Um, my mod allows you to play with these armored cars, which is, of course, a lot more difficult. But uh, there are some people who enjoy it, apparently. And I've, this is also part of my mega campaign run right now. So I started out in a German car. And if I lose my tank, my Panzer III, I might end up in another armored car again. It's a more challenging way to play the game. Yeah, that's Don't the other reason. You started playing the game because it makes the whole thing even harder. Yeah, but if you find it too easy or if you want even more of a challenge, then yes, you know, try out the Armored Card mod. That's another reason to join the Discord server. We uh, People post mods there and you get a lot of sneak peeks and previews as to what's kind of in the pipeline, the next big features that are coming. Because the game still is in early access. It is going to change quite a bit over um, sort of until you know, o over this summer, more or less. All right, thanks again. Okay. Hope you enjoy it.